happen. Um, Anglo Saxon five pounds says get Dangerfield on. Oh, I love Dangerfield. D A N G E R F I E L D Dangerfield. All right there. So a self help video. How do I enjoy life? I didn't know what to call this. How do I succeed at life? How do I get out of a rut? How do I improve myself? Blah, 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 blah. Now, a lot of you will have heard a lot of what I've got to say because I stream daily and I've been doing that for three or four years. The channel's about seven years old. I've told a lot of stories, but I haven't rehearsed this. I haven't scripted this. I haven't got a lot of post-it notes down here telling me what to talk about because I think I can just just improvise i think i can do that because i'm confident about speaking i've got that confidence and that's kind of rule one in life be confident be confident in who you are now that doesn't mean necessarily that you should be confident at speaking into a camera that doesn't necessarily mean you should be a confident public speaker because you might be terrible at those things but be confident in who you are what are your strengths? Identify them. Who are you? Get to know yourself. Don't spend your life trying to keep other people happy. Don't spend your life trying to appear as something. Be who you are. Be who you are. Because then you're working with a full hand. If you spend your life whining about what other people think, and a little side tip here, they're not thinking about you. <laughs> other people are doing the same as you. They're thinking about themselves. You know when we walk down the street and we're like, oh, no, man, this, I, I, I've made a weird choice of clothes today. Everyone's looking at me. No. They're all thinking the same as you. They're all thinking about themselves. They're self-obsessed. So don't spend your life worried about other people's think thoughts. Don't judge yourself by how other people appear. Because behind that appearance, you know, you might see some bloke walk down the road, he's perfectly toned, he's got a lovely full head of hair, he's 26 years old, he's got, as you can tell by his clothes, he's got a bit of money. And you're looking at that and you're thinking, oh man, I've got a shitty little job, I'm skin, I look like shit. Look at the competition. But that's an appearance. That's an advert. That's someone who cares about how they present. And you should care about how you present some of the time. There's, 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 there's times when you should. There's other times when you should have no t-shirt on because it's 36 degrees in Cambodia where you're recording this video. But that advert harbours a lie. <clears throat> because behind that there's a life. And a life is complex. A life is a struggle and a fight for resources. And that can take all manner of forms. That can be financial resources. That can be sexual resources. That can be professional resources. Doesn't matter. We're all involved in all of them. And, and, and that geezer that you've looked at that you're now comparing yourself with, his missus could be cheating on him. He doesn't even know about it. He could just be on his way to work for his boss to tell him you're fired. You might stop him and say, excuse me, mate, have you got the time? And he might go, oh, yes, certainly. The time is, oh, according to my Seiko watch. <laughs> and it's a different picture because he isn't that. And looking at someone and thinking, oh, you know, I'm nothing like that. You're not getting the full picture. You're getting the bit they want to show you. Don't judge. Don't judge yourself by other people. Judge yourself by yourself, and we get back to be who you are. Now, why am I giving this, um, why am I making this video? Because I enjoy life. I've always enjoyed it. My best mate, he's a very toxic best mate, but over the years, you know, we're what? 30 years friendship now, I met at university. I've understood his toxic side, and I just filter it out, or I just cut him off for a couple of months. But he, he resents it. He resents how much I enjoy life. He calls it Dangerfield's joy or Chris's joy. <laughs> the French call it joie de vivre. But I've got it. I love life. Now you might be thinking, oh, it's all right for you. You haven't been through this. You haven't been through this. You haven't been through this. I was a homeless street junkie. I was, I had a, 
a 20 quid acoustic guitar held on by the belt from a bath towel playing songs I wrote, namely A Wasp in a Bowl of Blood, <laughs> that was a classic, in Paint and High Street, trying to get enough money to buy some rolling backy, um, um, what were they called, uh, a, a, a Chelsea bun, and some smack, so that me and my girlfriend could stop withdrawing. That was where I ended up. And I crawled out of that. I crawled out of that. And about four years later, I was the director of my own business that was bringing £5,000 a day in. Now, it wasn't always five grand a day, but, it, you know, five, four, three, four, five, four. It's significantly and importantly uh, better than playing a wasp in a bowl of blood for people's loose change on Paint and Ice Street on a cold February morning while I'm withdrawing from heroin. So I do know what it's like to be down. I've been to 20 rehab centres, probably more. I've rounded it down to 20. You know, I've got problems in that area. And you'll have problems in certain other areas that I haven't got problems. I've never had problems with women, even throughout all that time on junk. You know, I've had sex with thousands of women, beautiful women. I've had long-term relationships with absolute angels. It's not a problem for me. But it might be a problem for you. But have you got the problem with the drugs? No. So, okay, we've understood something. We all have problems. We go back to resources. We go back to this fight, this struggle. This struggle to get through the day this struggle to get the things you need to make it worth going to bed and waking up again. And that business, oh, okay, now you've got your business, everything's sorted. You're sweet, five grand a day, pay your staff, pay this, blah, 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 oh, that's lovely. Life's not like that. Life does not plateau. We have an education system that, well, well an education system and we can add uh, the propaganda wing of the government to that, the media, that kind of gives us this impression that life will plateau. That at some point, everything will sort itself out. You'll have a wife or husband, kids, dog, white picket fence, mortgage paid, nice car, holiday home in Spain somewhere, plateau. Never happens. Life never stops being a struggle. That, that, that just goes on and on. And while we're on that, remember that at the end of all that struggle, <laughs> you're dead. You're dead. You are going to die. I am going to die. We die. And so how do you maintain? How do you enjoy a life that has got this finite element that, you know, and it's looming? It's, it's just, it's, you know, when I was like in my thirties, I couldn't quite see it, but now it's on the horizon. Old Death's over, there he is, look, with his <laughs> scythe, he's coming for me. But that's what makes me enjoy life, the finality of it. If it went on forever, I wouldn't enjoy it, There'd be, nothing would have value. It's the fact that you've got a limited time that things have value, that love has value that romance has value, that achievements have value, that living has value. You know, one life is enough if you enjoy it. One life is too, one life is one life too much if you don't enjoy it. So what, what, what do you, what's the pro, what, what do you do if you don't enjoy life? So you know the answer, you make changes. You have to change the situation. When I was a homeless street junkie, I didn't wake up and go, yeah, there's something wrong here. <laughs> Excuse me. There's something wrong with this situation that's making me not enjoy life. Oh, maybe if I had a bit more sex. Mm. It's all, most people know what the problem is. Once you've identified it, and you've already, you know what the problem is. You're, if you're watching this now going, no, I don't, I don't know, you're lying to me and yourself. We know what our problems are. 
and we tend to want to avoid them because it means facing up to the reality of who we are and it's easier to play the game of pretending to be someone else again thinking about what other people think of us but no be who you are identify those problems accept them you might only have one arm I don't know what that's like to be disabled like that but if you don't accept it you're going to live your whole life with the missing arm winning accept it accept it accept your accept 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 <laughs> fuck me accept 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 you can't speak on a live recording <laughs> live recording it's all gone very wrong but we'll be alright I'll edit all that out I won't I'll let you see it but accept your situation and that's where you're moving from let's go let's change things and you haven't got to do it overnight because it ain't going to work small steps make small steps to change things you know maybe you're not earning enough maybe you want more money now money isn't going to make you happy but it can certainly help you enjoy your life more if you're not worried about eating and rent you know the basics so how are you going to earn more money? Well, you you find out. You you know you find out how to make money. When I set my business up, I had no business experience whatsoever. I was a petty criminal. I used to sell drugs. I mean, it's business experience in as much as you buy something and you sell it for more money and you've got profit. Okay, but that's kind of basic. But. I knew nothing about the internet. The internet had just been invented. Well, it was just, you know, it was still dial-up. Talking about 2004 here. So, you know, if you wanted to use a computer, you had to go to the library. Remember libraries? <laughs> Big rooms full of books. You know, people used to read and that. Weird. But I asked for help. I asked people to help me. And we're terrible at this. As humans, we're terrible for ask, to asking people for help. Why? Does it make us look weak? Does it make us look like we don't know something? Yeah, both of those. Does it make us less than someone else? Yeah, in that respect, yeah. Does it mean we'll be stronger? Yeah, because people like helping you. And if you're motivated and if you're excited about your project, You'll be surprised how many people will just want to help you. Because humans are social creatures and they actually get something out of helping other people. You know, I asked a mate. A mate gave me a computer. It was like some old big yellow box affair. He got me online. He set up a forum. And then, then it just started snowballing. And when I didn't know something, I found someone who did know and asked them. And then there was other things I didn't know. I got involved. I got on on the looked on the internet. Suddenly, I had a bigger library. I could find out things there. Blah 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 blah. Now, did the business plateau? Did the, the, the is a business something that you just live with? Oh, now that's giving me a quality of life I enjoy. No, no, it took me eye off the ball. It took me eye off the ball. And one day, my staff said to me, "It's it's all gone, mate." We're, mate, we're turning over about £100 a day. And I sat there and thought, right, £100 a... Oh. So I had to fire my staff. I had to say, well, not fire. I just said to them, as you know, <laughs> as you know, we're not, we're not making a lot of money. So sorry about your jobs. And all the stock, all the paperwork, everything, got moved into my dream flat in Soho. When I used to bunk school as a kid, I'd go up to Soho, 11 years old, and I loved it. And I said, oh, one day, I'm... I found out you could live there. You know, coming from Dartford, trust me, the difference between Dartford and Soho, significant. It was, it was exotic. It was <laughs> sensual. It was erotic. It was, it was full of characters. You know, it was, it was great British eccentricism. And I wanted to be part of that. And by virtue of my business, I did. I had a flat in Soho. I didn't own it. <laughs> business didn't stay at five grand a day, trust me. But 
I rented the flat in Soho and it was my dream. And one day I've got a van outside and people were unloading box of to- boxes of tools. And once, once the, and a mate helped me do that. And once they'd all gone, I was sitting there in my dream Soho flat with my £4,000 bespoke suits hanging up, thinking, what have you done? Because not only have you not got a business anymore, but you're not going to be able to afford to pay rent in Soho. It was that that flat was over over two thousand, two bags of sand a month. I thought uh, you can't, you're not going to be able. To, uh, how are you going to pay for that? I had a bit of money in the bank, but you know, dick, 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 dick. the lifestyle I'd got used to, going to Thailand on holiday every other month. Getting suits made, getting clothes made all the time. You know, taking ladies out to flashy members' bars. I thought, it's all over. Whose fault was it? Mine? 100% my fault. I just I just thought it would be alright to, to ignore it and let the business run itself. And it run itself into the ground. And I sat in the middle of all, that, all those tools and all that paperwork, crying. I was about... What? I was about... 39, 38, 39. I thought, it's, you've done it. What are you going to do? You know, I hadn't worked. I hadn't had any, I didn't have a CV really. I, there's like the odd job that I, I'd done for a couple of weeks as a, a teenager or something. And I thought, well, you've got a choice here, haven't you? You've got a choice. You can either try and build the business back up, insert rocky training montage here, or you can just wash up back at your mother's house like you've done countless times before I thought no I'll make it work because I'm not doing that because I want more because I like this life and I did I, you know once I'd accepted that situation once, I, once I'd accepted that I'd made loads of mistakes that I'd been stupid that I'd taken things for granted once I'd accepted that let's get busy So I put all that stock back online, back in the shop, all at reduced prices, sale, 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 just to get some cash flow happening. I I remember I bought a big book, just, you know, I I didn't even know how to run the business because I had staff doing it by this point. So I was just improvising. Okay, I was was writing orders down by hand in pen. Uh, John Smith, two of these, 30 quid. (laughs) And then sending it out, going to the post office and taking a load of stuff in a, you know, postal sacks. And about eight... I rung up the staff, I said, do you want your jobs back? They were like, yep. Took them back on. Got more staff. Business carried on growing. And then about... What? Actually, I must have been about 37 when that happened. Anyway, regardless... Now I still have that business. That's what allows me to live in Cambodia because I can work remotely. I can work from this computer. So I know what it's like to fail. I know what it's like to be homeless. I know what it's like to have problems. But I love life because I don't take these things personally. I don't think, oh, the universe is conspiring to ruin my life. Bad things happen. My dad died when I was 16. My, my hero, my father, died. He went from a healthy 53-year-old to six foot under in about three weeks. I mean, that's quite rapid. It's quite a lot. I was just getting to the age where I was just becoming a man and starting to have a relationship with him. That You know, only the, early, the very beginnings, but man to man rather than child to man. And it was taken from me devastated me, devastated the family. You know, and I, I had to deal with that in, in in the way I did, which wasn't very good. Didn't even shed, didn't shed a tear for seven years. Had an argument with some girl, some nothing little argument, just started crying. She went, well, why are you crying? Because it was disproportionate to the argument we were having. And I said, I said, my dad died. And it was like I'd said it for the first time. And what I'd actually done was accepted it for the first time. Seven years, seven years wasted. Seven years going out of my mind, filling my head with 
drugs and alcohol and women and high risk behaviour basically distracting myself and this is another classic thing that people do people distract themselves people keep busy doing stupid things why what are you distracting yourself from well the answer's in the sentence distracting yourself you're distracting yourself from yourself you don't want to go near who you are you don't want to face the fact that you're this you don't want to accept all those things that have happened to you that are still happening to you that you haven't dealt with so you distract yourselves and distracting yourself as a, is a real problem because it keeps you in a rut and you know it's like people who live for the weekend weekend is a Friday night let's go Saturday night there we go wake up Sunday back to work Monday like a haze through the week some dead end job don't matter so it'll be Friday soon here we go and before you know it you're 40 or 50 or dead I've lost so many friends who got pissed all the time and no one thought they were alcoholics because they were just distracting themselves they were running from themselves so you've got to you've got to be who you are and you've got to work that hand the other thing is don't lie everyone lies right so it's a little bit of a contradiction everyone lies multiple times a day myself included everyone does it don't worry about that that's i mean when you're in your forties, <coughs> excuse me. When you're in your forties, you'll start to understand that. Maybe before you might be precocious in that area, but everyone lies. But when it comes to important things, when it comes to the the nuts and bolts of existence, like human relationships, like your relationship with yourself, don't lie. When you fancy a woman or a man or whoever. Don't lie to them, just tell them. Just say, I really fancy you. If you want to have sex with them, tell them that. I really fancy you, I'd love to have sex with you. I've done it thousands of times. And followed up with having sex with them. Because people, people are very good, uh, humans are very good at uh, identifying deception. We know when we're being lied to, unless it's done very, on a very clever level, which is why marketing companies cost millions. You pay a lot of money to get companies to deceive you. It's difficult. And the Joe blogs, you and me, man on the street, general public, here we go, not so good at deceiving people. So when you're sitting chatting to someone in a bar and she's boring the fuck out of you talking about a fucking college degree, She's probably bored too. She's probably waiting for you. She's, you know, those conversations can go on hours, and it's just, it's just deception, and it gets caught up in, yeah, no way, yeah, I'm really, oh no way, the social history of Russian realism, right? Yeah, yeah. Just be who you are. Now that might not mean you want to have sex with them, but you might just say. This conversation's really dull. <laughs> this is boring. I'm not, I'm not interested in this conversation. Now, I'm willing to try and talk about something else, but if it, if it maintains this level of tedium, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. And you watch people light up when you talk like that to them. You watch people relax when you talk like that to them. Because you're saying to them, Let's, should, we, should we stop playing, playing this game? Should we actually be who we are? Again, be who you are. Should we play the hand we've got rather than showing you the back of the cards? They're all the fucking same anyway.
if I was to die tomorrow and I was on my deathbed, I'd rather it be a death jacuzzi, actually. A death massage parlour. <laughs> That's that's not a bad business idea actually. I can see a like a skull and crossbones death massages. <laughs> There's something going on there with the old unconscious. But if I was if I was told Jesse, ah, you've got an hour to live, I'd be like, you you gave it a great shot. You absolutely lived it. You lived a life. And and just as I've thought that, then I've realised why I've lived a life. Here come the death police, the, the death massage police. Life doesn't come to you. You don't get, you don't get to sit on your ass playing computer games, watching videos and complain at the end of the week that nothing goes on in your life. You have to go and get it. You have to go and get it. You have to go and meet people. You have to go and make things happen. Life doesn't come to you. So go out and get it. Don't bullshit and be who you are. Good luck. Hey, Dangerfield, I heard you're a YouTube streamer and you publish writing and that you have created an amazing Thank community you. online. I want to tell you, keep on going. Don't let anyone stop you from your grind. You're going to make it to the top. And keep up the good work and stay consistent and keep looking at the light under the tunnel because guess what? You still got it. You're an accomplished writer and YouTuber. And we wow. support you. The Island Boys support you. So that means you're going to make it to the and top. And all your subscribers appreciate you a lot, man. Even the Island Boys. I yes, love sir. Well, with those two pillocks, <laughs> how can I fail? Accomplished writer and YouTuber. Writer, check my substack, link in the description. Ciao. Sweet.